learned from someone like Brian, you know, that you translate yourself as a band leader or even a band member collaborator? The impression I got with him was, I always thought he was quite smart, you know, he, um, uh, he, he'd given his, at least for me, he gave the musicians enough slack. Mm -hmm. uh, you could be yourself, you could play in your own style. Yeah. He had a way of like directing you to uh, make a good contribution to what he, he wanted, but without without altering his style or, or you know, he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't uh, get you to play something you were uncomfortable with. Right, right. I thought that was quite a talent that he, he could recognize. You know, he could walk that line. You know. It's it's interesting. It seems it strikes me that Brian was uh, that is the type of band leader like a Miles Davis, and that he brings he just has a knack for bringing people together, the right people yeah, together. Yeah, and yeah. what's beautiful about like again, I'll, I'll reference before and after science, a, a masterpiece of a record is it's nice to hear your personality within Eno's context, and it doesn't overshadow you know It actually enhances what what he was doing. Another Green World, the same thing. Yeah, with you, you're playing on that. It's it's an Eno record, but you can you can hear the personality of the players, and of course all the other players on the record as well. Well, we recorded a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of it was never used. I mean, it's, sometimes it was just just the two of us working. You know, and, right? Um, I do a track of electric bass, and I, uh, over up a track of upright bass, and mm -hmm. it was like just experimenting. Really, it was fun. I mean, it was really interesting. Um, you know, it's also interesting when you think about it that. The music for airports, which was technically supposed to be, I hate to use the term background music, but he wanted it to be background music. Yeah. We had just had a conversation with Ben Neal. And one of the things Ben was talking about, which goes along with the streaming, is the, the fact that now music is everywhere. It's almost, well, the, who was it that furniture music I, I, I don't remember <laughs> who it was but furniture music and, and it, it's an interesting concept because truly he was the first and while he's doing that he's doing of course green world and, yeah and all this other stuff and uh i was always can, searching i was always searching for music for washing dishes <laughs> i never found i'm still <laughs> Um, yeah, but wouldn't the white noise from the water sort of, uh, well, actually, it might mix in beautifully. Yes. yes. As long as you don't get soap on your fretboard. Uh, what, <laughs> what's the... Well, you know, uh, he was very adventurous. Uh, I don't know, one day, I'm trying to remember who was there. It was me and Phil and, um, might have been Fred Frith, I can't remember, but, uh, we all had a piece of paper and, and you know, said, write down one to a hundred. And then he says, uh, number one, Percy, you play an F sharp. And then number two, Phil, you hit whatever. Number three, and then there's all these instructions. So he started a, a click or a metronome, I can't remember. <laughs> I mean, uh, F sharp and then ding and then, you know, and then Phil is throwing uh, water bottles across the, the room. <laughs> a bicycle on the other side of the room. He's trying to hit the bicycle like in time with a click. <laughs> I think we got up to 11. And it, and it just, <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, didn't he? Um, he's got this app now called Oblique Strategies. And you shake oh. the app, and it, it's almost like that the eight ball, you know, that has the, it yeah. tells you what to do. As a matter of fact, here. Uh, Okay, so oblique strategies, shake. So it goes through all these things. And my rule for today is assemble some of the elements in the group and treat the group. <laughs> well, I remember uh, back then he, he had what looked like playing cards. Right, well, this is that. Right, right. Uh, yeah. And... Um, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if there were tarot cards or what, what the hell was going on, but he'd break these things up. Uh, it was, you know, I figured out it was part of his decision uh, making process. You know, nothing to do, to do with Alistair Crowley or. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, 
remember another time we were deep into something and we were talking about it. Because uh, another cool thing about him was he, he was open to suggestions. You know, you suggest something and he, he listened. Because some guys, like, you, you can't do that. It's, you right. know, it's my record. You right. shut up, you know. He's not my the guy who gave you the so Reddit base. We're into this uh, <laughs> sort of discussion and he said, let's have some cake. And he goes under the desk and he's got paper plates and, and a, 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 it was a fruit cake. Cuts everybody a slice of cake. So we're all, we're all standing around eating cake. And then everybody totally forgot about what we were talking about. We went on to something else. And I, I often wonder if that was a deliberate Oh, it sounds it, doesn't it? A technique, a great technique. Yeah. That's fabulous. That's if it fabulous. Was, if it was, it worked, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's it, great. those sessions were a lot of fun, you know. I remember going home after those sessions and feeling, feeling good, like, you know, that was some cool stuff today. Yeah. And so much, of that, that feeling. so much of that work stands up today. I mean, I, I listened to, again, the Green World Before and After Science and those records. And, and they're still relevant nearly 50 years later. 